اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والذین جاہدو فینا لنہدی انہم سبلنا سبحان ربک رب العزت اما یصفون والسلام علی المرسلین والحمد للہ رب العالمین اللہم صلی علی سیدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم <coughs> one of the <coughs> one of the concepts that we speak a lot about in the science of purifying the soul and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this concept of faith so you've probably heard this term used and thrown out thrown around a lot faith actually refers to the it's from fayda bad with a bad in order they say faith in Arabic, it's failed with a fa, ya, and a bad. And it refers to the barakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows, which allows someone to get closer to Him. So you can, you can think of it as the fuel which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for the vehicle of attaining His nearness. That's how you should think of it. Now, this concept of faith, there are certain things within the deen that by inherently create or attract the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which allows you to attain nearness to Him. And they're actually built into the deen. You don't need to add them, you don't need to make them up or come up with them on your own. Within the deen inherently they're already built in. For example, the fact that when we wake up we make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make wudu in the morning, we pray fajr, salah, we come to the masjid, we pray dhuhr, we read the Qur'an, we fast, we go to Juma. All these things are means or magnets by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah is attracted towards the believer. And they do one of two things. Either they purify your sins, if you have those, or they act to drive you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your sins are not, let's say, plentiful, not so much that they get absorbed by the or that the faith get that the faith is is used to remove them. For example, let me give an example to be much clearer. So let's say that you have ten sins that you did during the day, and you go and pray the Luhar Salah in the masjid. Those ten sins that you did between Fajr and Luhar, the barakah of praying the Luhar Salah in the masjid will wipe away those ten sins. We know that from hadith, because we know that the Prophet ﷺ said on one occasion to a companion when he had actually done something with another woman which was not zina, but was less than zina, but he considered it something very grave, and he came to the Prophet ﷺ complaining, and the Prophet ﷺ told him, after the entire story, and I've related this story to you before, that the prayer, whatever is prayed in between the prayer, wipes away the sins. At the same time, if there's another person in the jama'ah, who hasn't done anything in the morning except, since Fajr to Luhur except worshipped Allah, was careful about his his eyes, was careful about what he said, then that Luhur Salah, instead of wiping away his sins, will actually move him one step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the effect of the, the faith is the same. The barakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends on the person is the same. The question is where it's going to take the person. And that's the essential thing which we have to analyze within our life. Look, all of us came to the masjid and we prayed Maghrib today in the masjid. All of us attained that same degree of barakah and blessing. We're sitting in the masjid right now. The problem is, is that some of us have done so many things all day that the, uh, that the benefit of that Maghrib Salah just wipes away those two, three things that we did and we don't feel any different. Whereas there's other people who continuously are developing themselves, continuously are struggling such that every single prayer in the masjid acts to bring them one step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing with the month of Ramadan. There is no greater source of faith, well, almost no greater source of faith than perhaps the month of Ramadan. This is something that the Sahaba used to look forward to very, very deeply. And in fact, according to our ulama, they say that the faith of Ramadan, the barakah and the blessings of Ramadan, they don't begin in Ramadan. They actually begin two or three months before Ramadan in the month of Rajab. They begin in the month of Rajab, they increase in the month of Sha'ban, and then they peak at the first of Ramadan. So it peaks at the first of Ramadan. And the way to think about it is think about it as like Fajr. 
Like before Fajr, there's first the sun rises and the light begins to spread. And eventually the sun actually rises. You first begin to see some light. In the same way, the light of Ramadan, the sunset of Ramadan actually spreads light much before it actually arises on the first, of, the first day of that month. So there are benefits to be obtained for the month of Ramadan, even at this point. We're at the end, we're at the end of Rajab, almost in the beginning of Sha'ban. Right, we're at the end of Rajab, almost at the beginning of Sha'ban. One whole month has passed in which the barakah, the faith, the, the benefits of Ramadan have already started revealing themselves, but many of us have not even picked up on it. We haven't realized it. These are the things that act to develop, develop us and drive us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's taking advantage of these, these events. Like Ramadan, Salah in the Masjid, Wudu five times a day, fasting regularly, etc. And you'll find these throughout the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what they were there for. They were there to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in your path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the number one thing is to avoid sin. That's the number one thing. Because what sin does is it ends up keeping you exactly at the same place that you are. It anchors you down. So here you do some sin, then you come to the masjid, you pray. Then you go back, you do some sin, then you come to the masjid, you pray. Then you leave the masjid, you're doing the same sin, you come to the masjid, you pray. It's just a cycle, you don't go anywhere. You're just moving a step back, moving one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back, one step forward, and then you start questioning. The problem is, is that eventually then you start questioning the deen itself. Like, why am I not changing? Why am I not progressing and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why am I not benefiting? And the answer is, is because you're doing all these great things, inherently by being a Muslim, that's such a great thing. And yet, we continue to do things that distance us or move us back on our path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very, very important that we really sit down and analyze our life, figure out what are the things that we're doing that are disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, sin, unfortunately, in this day and age, we've redefined it completely. It's not what we think is bad or what the society thinks is bad. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has deemed to be bad. Because that's where the negative effect comes. It's from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ruled to be against his sharia. So one, it requires that you learn the sharia and that you learn those things, those acts which, which are categorized as disobedience to Allah. And then two, it requires that you avoid them with, 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 uh, with full force. Meaning you should be defensive. Now look, you come into the masjid, we've prayed maghrib. And then after this, we'll be doing dhikr for some period of time. Now here you've obtained all this fuel. This is fuel which should bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you leave this masjid, you have to be defensive. You have to be on guard, thinking what are the different ways that shaitan can get me over the next hour or two before Isha comes, and then defend yourself. Just like you would defend yourself. I mean, if you were carrying, if you had somebody, if I gave you, a, a, let's say, a bag of gold, okay? And I put that gold in a bag. And I just give you the bag. Nobody knows there's gold in that bag. Only you and I know there's gold in that bag. When you're walking with that bag, despite the fact that nobody knows there's gold in that bag, you will be so careful and so watchful. You will look twice behind your shoulder you will check your car, you'll park it, you know, in the most safe place, you'll look, you'll be very, very careful about that gold in that bag. Why? Because you know there's something valuable in that bag, even if nobody knows. You know that you have to defend that bag, otherwise somebody might take it from you. Same thing with your iman. Now, when you come into the masjid, you filled your heart with gold. This is a, this is the beauty of this deen. Coming into the masjid, praying in the masjid, doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaking hands with other Muslims, all these things are so beneficial to us. This is like gold. Nobody knows that you have it, except the problem is that shaitan, he witnesses what's going on. And the second you go out of here, he will be after you to, re- to rape you of what you've earned. There's no doubt, there's no doubt, because that's his job. That's what he promises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, that he will act to misguide and deceive people. So, we should begin to realize the treasure that we've been given. This is a treasure, the fact that you can come to the masjid. We don't appreciate it. If you go certain places in the world, there's very few people in the masjid. And many places they can't even open the masjid. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed us with this treasure, and so we shouldn't squander it by letting shaitan deceive us once we get outside of this place. So be very, very defensive of the treasures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon us. And inshallah, if you protect it, 
then that treasure will build every single time you return to the masjid or every single time you, as you continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to realize the treasures that he's bestowed upon us and to defend those treasures from shaitan and from our nafs.